This morning I'd like to take a little time just to talk about purpose. Everybody has a purpose, but not everybody knows what it is. Life comes in its crazy zigzag passion, and we don't always know how to handle it, not realizing that behind the problem, behind the thing that's unexpected, behind the surprise, behind the inconvenience, there's a push to find your purpose. I've experienced that in my own life, and I'm sure you've experienced it in yours. A loan officer one time told me, no, I was not going to get the loan. And I was pushed to find a loan broker who I became friends with. And I got every loan that I ever needed. Sometimes a no is a push to find another way. I was laid off from a job one time, and it pushed me to become a teacher. I wasn't planning on it. I was really afraid of it, but I was laid off, and so I was pushed. A lot of times we're pushed and we don't even realize that, that the pushing that's going on is really a way of leading us to our purpose, something that we need to do, but we haven't thought about doing it, or we're afraid to do it, but the little push, sometimes it's a gentle push, sometimes it's an aggressive push. Back in 1941, the Air Force, uh, the Japanese bomb Pearl Harbor they didn't know they were pushing us to become a superpower in the world. That's what happened. Sometimes it's a gentle push. David was minding his own business, watching his sheep. His father came to him and said, would you take some of these sandwiches to your brothers who are on the battlefield? He said, yes, dad, took the sandwiches and had no idea that he was going to meet Goliath, who would push him into his purpose. And God had planned for him to become the next king of Israel. Sometimes it takes a push. Many times what we do is we think that the devil is the one that's involved in what it is that's going on, and we think that somehow if the devil is involved, that it's outside of the realm of God's power. But the truth of the matter is God uses the devil. If the only thing God used the devil was for to get you on your knees, that's purpose. I see God, in a sense, of having a, a workbench and... He's put us on the workbench. In fact, the scripture says that we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. He's working. But the work that he does on us is not fun. He's got to measure and then cut and then file and sandpaper and paint and then shellac. And none of that is fun, but all of that is for a purpose. God is getting us to our prayer. Well, either that or we're going to live like hamsters that run around in a cage that keeps going around on a cycle for the rest of that little hamster's life. We need purpose. God created everything for purpose. And if that's the hamster's purpose, God bless him. It's not mine. Luke tells us a story that deals with purpose, and I want to take you into it. It's found in Luke, the 10th chapter. Starting with verse 25, it says, And behold, a certain lawyer, a lawyer who was there to trick Jesus, a certain lawyer stood up and tested Jesus, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, What does the law say? He said, The law says you to love God with all of your heart, soul, strength, mind, and body, and your neighbor as yourself. Just said, Good answer. Do it. He not wanting to be put off because it seemed like Jesus could handle himself so well he thought he could throw in another trick, 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 trick question. He said, who's my neighbor? Jesus said, glad you asked. Because the lawyer was thinking that Jesus would say another Jew. But if Jesus said a Gentile, he would say, they're not the seed of Abraham, and we call them dogs. So Jesus tells him a story, a disarming story, an interesting story. It's a simple story, but it's a story that's lasted 2,000 years, so it's got to have something really good in it. He says, then Jesus answered and said, a certain man, doesn't matter who he is, what happened to him does matter, but who he is is not important. 
Because what happened to him could happen to any of us. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Whatever half dead is, that's where he was left. And now he is a problem. He can't get up and help himself. He can't do anything except bleed to death out there on the side of the road. Now, you need to know something about this road from Jerusalem to Jericho. It's a 15-mile trip, but it's, it's got a lot of winding boulders and precipices that are difficult to navigate. And this is just an indication. In our day, in 30 minutes, you can get from Jericho, uh, uh, from Jerusalem to Jericho or Jericho to Jerusalem in 30 minutes by car. But in those days, it could take you at least two days to get that 15 miles because it was a treacherous road. In fact, that road was called the Bloody Way. It was called the Bloody Way because a lot of bandits hid out behind boulders waiting for some unsuspecting traveler, and then they would come and rob him, ambush him, take what he had, and then take off. It was known in that day. So Jesus tells a story about a man who got ambushed and was left for half dead. And then he goes on to say, but by chance... There's no chance. What looks like chance is not chance. So Jesus says that by chance, now it seemed like, because it does seem like there are a lot of things that happen to us that seem chancy. But God's behind it. He understands. He knows. So by chance, a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw the man, he passed on the other side. He was a good guy. Every Jew knew that the priest was a good guy. Jesus just painted him as a bad guy. He passed on the other side. He missed his purpose. And Jesus goes on to say, likewise, a Levite. When he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. Now, we don't know what they were thinking, but it's possible that the Levite was thinking what I would be thinking if it was on that road. It looks like a setup. If I go there to help this guy, some bandits are going to come out from behind a bush somewhere, beat me up, take my, and leave me half dead. I think I'll just go on. I would have thought that. I know you don't think I would think thoughts like that. But you would too. It's a lonely road. It was known as a place where people got beat up. So he passed by. He went on his way. I want you to notice that the two people that Jesus used in this story were two elites. Two elites. Now he introduces a deplorable. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, that's two days' wages, whatever you earn in a day, he gave him two days' worth, gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, take care of him and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. The Samaritan, considered in those days as a deplorable, did not realize that he was stepping into history and he was discovering that this incident, this circumstance, was going to push him into a purpose, a purpose which was to help. Jesus tells a story and then he says, of which, the, of which of these three do you think was the neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And the lawyer said, he who showed mercy on him. Jesus said to him, go. And do likewise. That's your neighbor. So who's your neighbor? Is someone who has a need. Simple story. But in this simple story, there's a lot of profound truth. I want you to notice what the story is not about. The story is not about justice. It's not about finding these bandits and bringing them to justice and making them pay for what they did. There's not a hint. We don't even know if the bandits were ever caught. 
The story has nothing to do with justice. It's everything to do with help. If you want to know it in simple forms, in fact, one of my passions when it comes to preaching is make it simple and make it clear. Our purpose, your purpose, and my purpose is to help. I help in my way, you help in your way. You don't make your way my way, I won't make my way your way. But both of us have the same purpose, and that is to help. God give me the grace to find somebody or something that I can do, that I can help. If you want to know how to fulfill God's will, there's a great starting place. Roll up your sleeves and help somebody. Somebody in your life needs help. In fact, when I'm reading through the gospel, you can't help but realize page after page after page, it's people who need help. Blind Bartimaeus needed his sight. Zacchaeus needed to find Jesus. The woman with the issue of blood needed to be healed. The man with the withered arm, he needed to be healed. The leper needed to be touched. The demonic needed to be undemonized. Yeah, that's what he needed. He needed to be undemonized. <laughs> And the hungry people needed to be fed. You know, you, you go through the Bible, you find fishermen. Every time Jesus came across fishermen, they couldn't find any fish. So you just had to tell them which side of the boat. You wonder, what school do they graduate from? Which side of the boat to cast their net? Everybody needs help. At the marriage feast at Canaan, they needed wine. They ran out of wine. They come to Jesus. Jesus helped. He helps everybody. Nicodemus needed to know he needed to be born again. Everybody, the lame man, needed to be touched by the word of God and lifted back up on his feet. Everybody in the scripture needs help. Should it surprise us that we don't? Peter was sinking after trying to walk on water at the command of Jesus. He began to sink because he was looking at the wind and the waves and got his eyes off of Jesus. He sank and he said, Jesus, Lord, Save me. And Jesus reached down and gave him a helping hand. Do we need a helping hand today? Jesus is the one that helps. And when he tells us to go and do likewise, we're doing what he did. He helped. So we help. God made everything with a purpose. He made the sun to shine to give us warmth and light. He made the clouds to give us rain. He made the moon to give us tides. He made man for a purpose. And woman. He made you with a purpose. And sometimes he's got to come along with some strange things to get us to see our purpose. President Eisenhower was being interviewed when he was president, and they asked him this question. He said, who, in your estimate, gave you the best advice in your life and career? His cabinet members were there, and they thought maybe he would pick one of them. And President Eisenhower said, my mother. He said, when we were kids, we used to play cards, and my mother would deal out the cards, and we'd play a game. And when she dealt me a bad hand, I wanted to quit. And she said, Ike, you play that hand to the end. He said, that's the best advice I ever got. Mothers usually don't get Emmy Awards for being a mother. But all through their life, what they've been doing is helping, helping, helping. Have you ever stopped to think how many diapers they've changed in a lifetime? I wish I had a dollar for every diaper. <laughs> Helping, that's what they do. They may not receive the recognition, but that's what they do. Their purpose is in helping, and so is ours. Ours is this. If it wasn't for help, I wouldn't be here today. I needed help. I went to a school only because the pastor and gave me the name of a school that would take some poor kid that didn't have any money to pay for tuition. And they accepted me. And I graduated. Just before graduation, about two weeks before graduation, I had no, no understanding where I was going. So I'm ready to graduate. 
And in two weeks, what am I supposed to do? I don't know. One of the teachers named Brother Fortunato picked up his telephone and made a couple of telephone calls. And before you knew it, before graduation, I was already earmarked to be a custodian at the Rochester Glad Tidings Church. And also I could continue my education at Roberts Wesleyan College. I needed help. And it was there. Don't you? Don't you thank God that the help came? And now he says to us, go and do likewise. They helped you. Help others. Because the road that we are on, like the bloody way that Jesus was talking about, is a road that's treacherous and dangerous. Anything can happen on this road. We can get sick. We can have an accident. There are con artists out there that will waylay us. And some will steal our identity. Did you ever get a call from the IRS? <laughs> In the last couple of years, I think I got five or six calls from the IRS. They said they were the IRS. And they said there was a warrant out for my arrest. <laughs> but I could avoid it if I went out and got a money order for about 5000 I could throw in a tip, 5100 And they would make sure the IRS didn't come after me. They're out there, folks, by the hundreds. They got your telephone number. They know your name. And they're going to call on the road, the bloody way. Anything can happen, you can become ambushed so easily, left stripped, bleeding, and wounded. And we're here to help. And so are you. I was studying this, and I came across an interesting story. I think I told it before. In fact, I'm sure I told it before. But, it, but I, I got to tell you about, about this dog. It's not my dog. It's a dog that lived a long time ago. This dog and his owner, nine-year-old boy, went for a walk. They explored a cave. While they were in the cave, there was a rock fall. The dog escaped. The boy was left behind. The dog ran to town, barking, trying to get anybody's attention he could. Finally got somebody's attention, and he brought that person to the cave. And they removed the stones that were in the way, and the dog never knew that he had just saved the life of the future president of the United States. That nine-year-old boy was Abraham Lincoln. The dog helped. Hey, you know, it's interesting that God can use anybody and anything to get the help. So if you're feeling lonely and you feel like nobody's there to help, don't, don't even believe what you're thinking because God can get anybody, anything, to help you. I'd like to wrap it up by just simply saying this. A child is in the mother's womb and the child is taking care of every problem a child has. It's the perfect temperature. The child doesn't need to do anything but grow. And, and whenever it's hungry, it's fed. And the mother carries it wherever it does go. Everything is perfect. The child in the mother's womb, could live like this forever because that's paradise. But then things get too tight and there's a pushing going on. And the child is pushed out of his world to discover his purpose. His purpose is to live on planet Earth and God has given that child everything that the child needs. He's got eyes to see, ears to hear, mouth to speak, 
fingers to touch, legs to walk, got everything, everything for the purpose. It's the purpose for living on earth. The same God who did that is still doing it today. He's preparing us for purpose. And just like that child had to deal with the pushing and the struggling that was going on in the mother's womb, we have to deal with the pushing and the struggling and the tugging and the yanking that's going on on the road of life. And it's easy to become discouraged and say, what's the use? There is a use. God is pushing us into our purpose. It's something that God wants you to do, but you can't get to do it until you go through what it is you're going through so you can get to the other end. And on the other end, there it is, purpose. I wish it wasn't that way. I wish God gave us our instructions before we were born so that after we were born, we just read them and do what it is. But it doesn't come that way. He puts us through stuff. You and me. Because he is hammering out a life of purpose. Don't grow weary in doing well. Because it's your purpose. Don't surrender to the fight. Keep on storming the gates of hell. Keep on doing what you know is right. Many years ago, 1974, Nancy and I, with the children, came to California. I came as an associate pastor. The first year was incredible. It was so easy. I was a pastor for six years. Now I was stepping into the associate pastor's position. All I had to do was take orders. Nancy Ann started a Sunday school. I worked in the printing shop. And I did a Tuesday night Bible study and, and movie. I thought I was on vacation. In fact, I was. Nancy and I led a tour group to the Holy Land, a 17, 19 day tour group. So all we had to do is go from place to place and kind of keep the people gathered together, make sure they got on the bus, got off the bus, got on the bus. I'm sitting, Nancy and I are sitting in the King David Hotel in Jerusalem. It's a knock on the door. It was the pastor's wife. She came in weeping, sobbing, and all she could say is, it's over. It's over. I said, what is over? I'm 17,000 miles away from home. 7,000 miles away. It seemed like 17. What's over? She said, the ministry has collapsed. It's no more. I didn't know at the time. All I thought was, this is the end. This is the living end. And I didn't know I was being pushed into purpose. Sunlight was that purpose. God has his way of sending the help that we need when we need it in a way that we can't understand. God is able. He's able. I was going through this study and I read something that was amazing to me. I did, you, know, talk, you know, I'm talking about help. In fact, if you could entitle the message, it would be, it would be being pushed into purpose, but it would be help. Just plain help. A dog helps. People help. I had no idea that trees help. Look at this. This is a willow tree. I was amazed to read this. The enemy of the willow's tree is a caterpillar. So when the caterpillar cry, climbs up on the willow's tree and starts to nibble at its leaves, the willow tree senses danger and actually secretes a chemical that the wind picks up and blows whichever the wind is going and it sends a message to all the other willow trees in the area 
that there's an attack going on and that they need to secrete a chemical which they produce, it gets into their leaves and it's distasteful to the caterpillar so that the caterpillar won't eat. Let me tell you something. If God created trees to help, he created people to help. I lift my hands to heaven, hear my heart surrender. I tell my soul again, you are Lord of all. And though the seas are raging, you will speak and take them, and you are fine. 